Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today I want to talk about a very important subject that I have mentioned in passing in other videos, but I, I thought it deserved its own headline. Um, so basically the what I want to talk about today is the fact that the holster, okay, a hard kydex holster, is the safety mechanism on a modern uh, striker fired gun. Okay, so here I've got a Glock 17, okay, uh, it's got a fairly light trigger pull it's got no safety on the gun the gun doesn't need a safety because the safety is the holster okay um, it has to be a hard kydex holster like this it cannot be a leather holster it cannot be any a fabric holster uh, and I've seen pictures of leather holsters uh, that over time you know they weaken and and uh, uh, this piece here can collapse um, and and kind of you know fall towards the trigger and you know, eventually you'll be reholstering and you'll activate the trigger. Uh, so you need a hard kydex holster uh, to serve as the safety mechanism for a striker fired gun. Um, now, you know, why this? Why not a manual safety? One of the things that I have seen repeatedly over many years is that when guns have safeties on them, you know, specifically handguns, um, um, what, what happens is people either forget to turn, you know, remove the safety or they accidentally put the safety on. Uh, and a lot of guns have safeties on them. Uh, they have like these really small safeties um, that's only there because in, certain, in some states uh, it's required. Some states, they have laws that say that they cannot sell a handgun unless it has a safety on the gun. But it's like so small, I mean, it, it's like impossible to actually activate um, not impossible but it's very difficult to activate under a stressful situation especially if your hands are sweaty uh, so those safeties really aren't meant to be used they're there just because they have made uh, arbitrary laws in certain states that require that safety to be there um, so uh, and, and, the, and they specifically make those safeties so they're like they're out of the way um, and there's like no chance that you're going to accidentally put it on. But on other guns like 1911s, I have seen many times um, what happens is that, that people, you know, while they're shooting, while they're doing drills, um, you know, they, they accidentally put the safety on um, when they're not expecting it to be on or sometimes the gun's sitting in the holster. Um, and they think the safety is on when it's, it, is, is, it is in fact off. Um, and it doesn't matter if the safety, you know, if, if, the, if, if you have a 1911 that's in a hard plastic holster like this that, that protects the trigger guard, it doesn't matter if the safety comes off because, again, the, the safety mechanism um, is, the, uh, is, the, is, is the holster itself. But the problem with that is that um, if, you know, you pull the gun out of the holster and you think that the safety is, uh, that you think the safety is off, uh, and it's actually on and the gun's not working and on a, on a 1911 the way that gun is meant to 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 be shut to be used is that your thumbs actually ride on top of the safety while you're shooting that's that that way you make sure that the safety is off uh but i don't want to make this the focus of the video the, the focus of this video is the fact that the that the safety i'm uh, sorry that the holster is the safety mechanism uh for the uh for, you know for the modern striker fired gun now you might say well how about you know your ar-15s and ak-47s they got safety well the thing is that the an ar-15 doesn't go in a holster it gets slung over your back or it hangs in front of you so the trigger is exposed that's why a, a a fighting rifle has to have a safety mechanism on it that's drop safe okay um uh, and shotguns are not the safeties on shotguns are not considered drop safe so that's why Usually, when people store shotguns, they don't they don't store them with around the, in the chamber. They they you know they, they store them cruiser ready. Um, you know, except you know, with the exception of course being if you know that there's riots and stuff going around town. I mean, yeah, then you may want to consider putting the uh, around in the chamber and, and safety on um, if if, the, if your situation is that hot. Uh, but generally speaking, yeah, AR-15s, AKs, you know, around the chamber safety on. Uh, and that's part of your, you know, that's part of your drill. You know, when you do like up drills when AR-15, you come up, you practice taking that safety off. Now, usually, when we're using an AR-15, um, there's a little bit more mental preparation. Okay, in, in the sense that, okay, somebody's breaking into your house, you get your, you know, you, you go, you get your equipment, you get yourself into that, you know, into your safe room, you get yourself into behind cover, right? You get yourself into that, into that position that you have planned ahead of time. Uh, so you're you're better prepared. So when somebody crosses that line in the stand, right? You give them 
that verbal warning, get out of there. I, I've talked about in other videos about actually use, if somebody's in your house, you know, using that 1000 loom light that's on your rifle to shine it in their face uh, as, 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 as a final warning, back off because, you know, you know because basically a 1000 loom light in, in somebody's eyes in, in, a, in a house that's relatively dark, um, you know, they're going to do one of two things. They're either going to back off or they're going to charge you real hard. And at least you know that, that you know, it's going to happen then and there. Okay, so you're kind of taking initiative. Um, but what it, what it, the point is that when AR-15, you have, you know, a little better preparation. You're in position, okay, uh, when you, if you're using your handgun, you're in an emergency situation, whether it's because, you, let's say you're in a home defense situation and your rifle went down and now you're resorting to your handgun, or if you're, you know, out walking about and you are attacked, um, you usually have, you know, you, you usually have uh, less warning, okay? Um, you might be in an awkward place, right, where you're not familiar with your surroundings like you would be in your own home. Um, so, so uh, using a pistol is usually more of a, an emergency type of situation. And the last thing you want to deal with is with a safety, okay? Whereas with a rifle, yeah, you're, you had a chance to get yourself into that into that position to your, you know, behind cover, and you're a little bit better prepared and you're mentally prepared to take that safety off before, you know, you start using the gun. Um, now, uh, this is an outside the waistband uh, holster. Um, you know, this is a Glock 17. It's big. It sticks out a lot. This is the type of gun that I would use, you know, you know, if I'm, you know, as a backup to an AR-15, okay? So this this is, you know, what I consider, you know, a shit hit the fan type of pistol or duty pistol. For everyday carry, that's a little bit too big. It sticks out too much. So for everyday carry, you know, I prefer this um, uh, M&P shield. It's a seven shot. You know, I keep another magazine, um, you know, uh, on the other side. Uh, but again, this is a striker fired gun. So the safety mechanism of this gun is the is the holster okay there's no safety on this gun okay and you know basically because it's inside the waistband um and it's in this five o'clock position you know it takes a lot of practice to be able to pull this gun out extend you know come back in you know you know pull your shirt out of the way and reholster um and that's part of my draw stock because you know even if i'm out even if i have a gun outside the waistband i always want to get my hands on my body someplace so that I'm not actually drawn into my hand um, and you know and it works just as well having to clear the shirt pull the gun out join here go to full extension you know do everything in reverse get the gun back into the holster uh, and really important that there's nothing else in this area I don't hang keys over here I don't have a cell phone right phones on this side over here so there's nothing else in this area that would accidentally snag that trigger as I'm reholstering especially in a gun that's inside you know that's that you know in a holster that's inside the waistband because obviously now i'm bringing the gun even closer to my body uh, and what i typically do is when i come out right and I come back in uh, i usually will stick my ass out a little bit so i'm pointing the muzzle kind of away from my body so that's part of um, you know that's part of my drill um, and that's something that i practice you know but and you know this is something that needs to be practiced i practice this with a timer uh, and without a doubt I am a lot slower, um, uh, you know, drawing a gun out of a holster that's inside the waistband. There's no question about that. If the gun is outside the waistband on the side over here, I am a lot faster. I've seen it on the timer. However, this is a little bit awkward. It sticks out. You know, this is a lot more comfortable for me to carry. I can sit in the car because that's a big consideration. A lot of times people don't think about you got to carry a gun like this. And, you know, I mean, yes, if you're standing all day, yes, this is okay. But, um... What happens if when you go to sit down in the car, right? The seat, where's the seatbelt? So seatbelt's gonna be right where this gun is. So that's really awkward. That's why for like professional drivers, a lot of times they'll use like shoulder holsters. Uh, it makes a lot more sense for them, given you know if they're gonna be driving all day. Uh, but for me, it makes sense to have a a thin gun like this, like the M&P Shield. Uh, I keep it in the in the, in the five o'clock position here. Basically, it sits on the on the hollow of my ass over here. So so it's between the hip bone and the ass cheek, right? there's, there's a little groove in there, that's where it sits, uh, and I practice with this gun, you gotta practice with this gun, and I will do repetitive drills, right, coming out of the holster, coming out, going out, reholster, coming out,
felt this is what you got to do. I mean, you got to you got to practice this. You got to you got to practice this, especially with a you know if you're inside the waistband, you, you know you got to practice drawing from that position and reholstering to that position. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, well, when, when you reholster, you should never look. Well, my thing is that you know if the gun's on the side and you might be in a very awkward position, you might be behind cover on your knees or whatever. You know, so 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 your body might not be in the normal position that it normally is in. So, you know, if you need to look at the holster to safely reholster it, because obviously you're not going to reholster until you've already done your scan assess and you know that the, it's it's safe to reholster the gun. Um, you know, if you need to look at it for a split second to make sure that you're safely reholstering, do so. Now, in this five o'clock position, that's that's not an option, okay? Because I might, you know, I really can't see back there. So, so that's fine. So what I do is I reholster more slowly. Um, you know, it might be a race to come out of the holster, but it's never a race to go back into the holster. Now, one of the things that I will typically tell people is that if you're in a self-defense situation, right, um, what I'll do is if I have to throw the gun, fire, come out, right? Oh my God. Oh. All right. So in this case, the gun's empty. Actually, let me just do it. Let me actually go through the magazine change. I wasn't planning to do that, but hey, I'll do it. All right, got that in there, fine, okay? So I'll do my scan assess, right? Now, when I do my scan assess, what I'll do is a lot of times I'll cover the gun up. Okay, that's part of my scan assess. Because after I fire those shots, um, I don't want everybody seeing that I have a gun because they might not know that I'm not the bad guy. They might mistake me for a bad guy. So, so let's do this again, right? I'm gonna come out of holster, right? Come out, fire my shots. I'm gonna cover the gun up. Right, do my scan assess, you know, maybe to get behind cover, do my scan assess from here, you know, and then safely reholster the gun. Um, so, so that's an important thing, you know, think about your cover, but think about covering your gun, you know, and then looking around, making sure the coast is clear, right, but keep the gun covered, okay, uh, uh, and then reholster it as quickly uh, as it is feasible, okay, once you know that, you know, there's no immediate threat, get the gun back in the holster so that people don't mistake you for a bad guy um, and likewise in reverse if you see if you hear gunshots and you see somebody with a gun right you're not gonna know who the good guys and who the bad guys are look at their gun handling okay look at you know you know are they keep you know are, are, are they disciplined you know are they are they flagging everybody or, or are they making are they being careful not to flag uh, people that's gonna give you a lot of information about who's a potential you know, good guy versus who's a potential bad guy. Because a bad guy is not going to care. He's just going to flag everybody. You know, he's going to be, you know, walking around like he's the Terminator, not just not caring. Uh, whereas a good guy is going to probably be behind cover. You know, he's going to be a lot more cautious. He's going to be looking around. You know, um, you know, he's going to have a gun in the holster as opposed to, you know, down his pants. So, so these are like telltale signs. You know, how people act, how people move uh, is going to tell you about, you know, who's good and who's bad. They'll, they'll give you subtle hints. Um, so these are all things to consider. But like I said, the main thing I wanted to talk about in this video is that the holster, okay, the holster um, is the safety mechanism for the modern striker fired gun. And it has to be a hard Kydex holster like this uh, that protects the trigger guard. This one has a little button. Both of these holsters have a, have a, um, um, uh, a screw over here that allows you to tighten the tension. Um, and where do I want that tension? I want that tension so that if you look at me when I come out of the holster, you see my belt actually pulls out a little bit. So it, you know there's a, there's, a, there's some force involved in getting the gun out of the holster, but not so much that that the, you know I'm pulling my pants up and maybe the holster's coming off the belt. So so I want it just right so that there's just that there's enough tension so that the gun won't accidentally fall out or somebody can't easily grab it out. Because in order to get the gun out of here, I got to get a firm grip on the gun in order to come out okay um so so, this, so again you want to you want to adjust that tension just right i know some holsters have a you know a, a retention button that you have to push if, if you're going to get a holster that has like what we call level two retention um i prefer the button on the inside over here where you push down and pull up right as opposed to over here i don't like it i don't like a a, a, a release button on this side here because if you're pushing a button here Okay, it's, and as you come out, you know, because you're applying pressure, you know, it's just too easy for your finger to slip onto the trigger. So what happens when my when my finger comes, you know, when I when I pull my finger, I want this finger loose. I don't want this finger applying any pressure to release buttons over here. So if there's got to be, if there has to be a, a a release button on the holster, right? You feel that you need it. 
it has to be on the inside over here that you can activate with your thumb so that all the pressures with your thumb and actually with your thumb you're actually able you push the button because i have one of those you know you push the button and it actually helps you lift the gun out of the holster okay as opposed to having a button on this side so that's something important when you're when you're selecting holsters if, if you if you got to have a retention a, 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 um, you know level two retention with a release button you don't want it on the outside where the trigger is where you're applying pressure as you're pulling up you want it on the inside where you're hitting that button with your, with your thumb. So uh, if you guys have any comments, questions, any feedback, whatever, you know, put in the comment section. I, 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 you know, I love getting feedback from you guys. Maybe you guys have some ideas that I have not thought of. Uh, if you're not a member of the channel, please subscribe. I'll talk to you guys soon.